party people, it's Drew back again with Princess Craft RV and I hope you're as excited as I am today. We are going to be taking a look at the accessories and the appliances of the Luna Rover by Intec. Alright guys, right up front here, uh, the loading and unloading process as always. The rover here is going to be sitting on a two inch ball, so either let us outfit you with that or bring, one, bring along one with you at the time of delivery. Uh, you're going to start out with your coupler three inches above your ball and drop. We then center ourselves underneath the coupler. Use this crank handle here to go ahead and lower that coupler fully seating on the ball. We then take our little lock mechanism here and we slide that back. Now you do see you have a, a secondary keeper there and we wanna make sure that that is actually engaged there. So go, always go back, give it a pull, make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. Also not a bad idea to go ahead and pin this back with a secondary pin, uh, not only for security, but for uh, safety as well. Uh, keep that from potentially working itself loose going down the road. You're then going to take your tow chains, very important that we do cross those underneath the coupler, and we're gonna hook those onto the receiver of the vehicle. So it is very important that you have enough room to make your turns left to right, but not so much room that these may make contact with the pavement. Riding right next to those tow chains is a very important piece of safety equipment. This is what is called your emergency breakaway cable. If these other tow components were to become compromised as the two vehicles separate, this would act like a ripcord to the electric brakes, essentially doing its best to stop the unit in its tracks. Uh, biggest thing to remember with this is you will need a third or separate connection point on the receiver for this. So whether that's going to be a carabiner, a quick link, whatever you got to go ahead and connect this separate of the tow chains is gonna be best suited for you. Now also we have your seven way plug here. This is going to plug into the corresponding receptacle of your tow vehicle. And what this is going to do is give you full function to your vehicle's braking system, uh, lights, tail lights, charging system, things like that. Uh, generally, you'll make sure that this is inserted fully, making sure that seven way door is going to lock down on that, keep that from coming loose. Our jack here, uh, of course, easy up or down in terms of direction. Now, once this is loaded onto your vehicle, you're gonna go ahead and pull this pin and that whole jack is gonna pivot here onto the side. Now, of course, we can't do that with the weight on it now, but it does kind of stow away. So it's a really cool, nice feature that's gonna keep that out of your way. Now, uh, you may be asking yourself what we have behind this door. It's gonna be a surprise. We'll wait until the end and you will get to see what is behind this new door here on the Rover. A huge selling point of the Rovers and the Intex in general is this huge window that they've become famous for. Uh, we have the rock guard installed. Of course, going down the road, you need to have the rock guard installed. Uh, very easy on this particular model to install that and remove it. Uh, they do utilize this snap system, so it's nothing too crazy. They're just some pressure snaps. And you have those all the way around and you just go ahead and snap those down. That's gonna protect you from any road debris, rock chips, things like that. Now coming around here to the doors, we have these really cool magnetic holdbacks. Uh, if we see that's not only going to keep the camper from swinging or the door from swinging back into the camper, it's also gonna keep, uh, keep that in place if you're you know, loading and unloading things or you do just wanna go ahead and take advantage of that open air environment, you can go ahead and do so without having to worry about this swinging in the wind. Uh, moving on here, tire pressure and lug nuts are going to be a very important thing that we need to talk about. Uh, max tire pressure for these, t these tires is going to be 50 PSI. With any camper or trailer tire, you do run them at that max tire pressure rating. What that's going to do for you is give you the highest flexibility in terms of weight rating. Whether you have the unit completely full or completely empty, that 50 PSI is going to be a good number for you. Now also here in the shop, we went ahead and torqued these lug nuts down to 100 foot-pounds. That is the manufacturer's recommendation. 
They are also going to further recommend that you go through a initial retorque procedure. What that's going to entail for you is the first 15, 25, 50, and 100 miles. It's very important that you do go ahead and retorque those lug nuts down to 100 foot pounds, make sure they're not working themselves loose. Now, hopping up here, we have our water connections. What we're gonna find here on the left is going to be our potable water or our tank fill. What you're going to go ahead and do is if you're doing any boondocking, off-grid camping, of course you need to truck your water in with you. What you're going to do is stick your drinking water hose directly into the orifice. You will fill it up till you are satisfied. Once you are done, we just as easy as removing it, we cap it off. And just to let you know, this is not naturally pressurized. So what Intec has done is they have installed a 12 volt water pump. What that will do for you is go ahead and pressurize that water system draw it up from the tank to the fixtures and make that usable. So right next to that is going to be your city water connection. Now city water is pressurized directly from the line. Now more often than not, it's over pressurized for the working water pressure rating of these units. So uh, generally these units are rated for anywhere between 50 and 75 PSI. Out there in the wild, you may find a water pressure anywhere from 80 to 100 PSI. So the only way to effectively protect yourself is going to be with a water pressure regulator. So important that we have included one with your purchase. So when you go ahead and use this, we're gonna hook that directly onto the water source or as close to the water source as we can get. We then go ahead and hook our hose onto that. And then lastly, we make our connection here at the camper by rotating this hose fitting here on the camper side of things. Uh, very, very important if this were to become misplaced, damaged in any way, make sure we are replacing this before we take the unit out. Right here is going to be a vent for the battery box. It's, the battery box is, of course, underneath the sink, and it is going to be in a sealed battery box, so that needs to vent somehow, and that's what we see here. Now, moving down here, we have a cable satellite inlet. So what that would allow you to do is using a standard RG6 cable fitting will allow you to go ahead and take advantage of TV services, whether that's going to be an aftermarket satellite package or a park cable service. Either way, this would be the inlet of those services and they will terminate at the designated TV area of the camper. And then directly below that, we have a portable solar panel uh, plug, I should say. And what that will allow you to do is this that gives you a direct connection to the battery and it is designed for a portable solar panel. So the idea being is that you have this plug and play connection here. You can go ahead and take your, your panel out into the sunlight. Generally with these portable panels, the charge controller is going to be built directly into the panel. That's going to intake energy as necessary while at the same time making sure not to overcharge your batteries. And then below that we have your 30 amp, 110 volt power supply. Now this is your cord, comes with the unit. Generally you'll find that these are about 25 to 30 feet in length and it is only going to plug into the camper one way. So if we go ahead here and take a look at the plug, you're gonna have two slotted, two slotted receptacles in one L shape. And just like when you were a kid, if you line the shapes up, it's going to plug straight in. Now this is a twist lock cord, so we give it an eighth inch turn to the right here that locks it in. But then we do have a secondary collar here to screw down and lock that in further. Uh, now one recommendation I make, and if you've watched any of my videos, you, this will sound very redundant. I say it in every single one, but you need to add a 30 amp surge protector. It's very, very important. A lot going on even in these smaller units electronically. The only way to effectively protect yourself from substandard wiring, natural surges, uh, you know, dirty power, all of those things is going to be protecting or monitoring the flow of energy before it gets to your camper. And of course, the only way to do that is with a 30 amp surge protector. So we have some specific products here at Princess Craft that we do recommend and how to use them. If you have any questions on that, feel free to give our parts department a call. They would be more than happy to further educate you. Next up is going to be your propane compartment. And I absolutely love this. Look at this cute little guy here. It's like a baby. So this is a two, a two gallon tank, I believe, which is generally, which would be about half of what you're gonna find in a standard, you know, barbecue cylinder. Uh, but for running 
you know, essentially just the cooktop, this is going to be more than sufficient for you. This will last many, many camping trips and it's the perfect size for this unit. And I, I just, I love it. So um, you can see that it's held in here with a strap that's very easy, spring loaded, take the tension out, no big deal. And then you're going to find just like with any tank, you have a service valve on the top and a pigtail that will allow you to go ahead and remove it. And just look at this little thing. It's so precious. Here at the rear of the unit, you are going to notice that you have two stabilizer jacks. Uh, now, of course, these are not for leveling or meant to be weight bearing. These are just to go ahead and stabilize the unit. Um, very easy to operate. You do have an included crank handle here. It's kind of a spline drive des uh, design, so make sure that we are lining up everything properly. And once we go ahead and level the unit to our comfort level, we're then going to run these down. Once they make contact with the pavement, you'll just want to go like a quarter turn more just to sure everything up. Uh, same on the way up. Now these aren't gonna work themselves loose going down the road. You don't really need to he-man it or anything. Um, just you know, a nice light touch. They'll stay in great shape for a longer period of time. Uh, coming back here into the kitchen area, um, you know, first thing you are probably going to notice is the beautiful blue lights. Those are awesome. We're going to turn those on here with the accent light switch. And then we have our main light switch. It's going to be the one here behind me. And then also on that display we have or that switch cluster we have our water pump switch uh, again that's going to pressurize that freshwater system draw that water up from the tank to the fixture to allow that to be used and then we have our fridge 12 volt switch so um, the reason why they have a switch there is because if you're again doing any like off-grid camping boondocking things like that uh, Intec wants to be extra sure that you know you're running your switch your your refrigerator or your cooler box in 12 volt uh, because they don't want you to inadvertently kill your battery and then you're stranded in the middle of nowhere with no power or anything like that. So uh, it's a really smart idea for Intec to include that uh, on that switch cluster. And then we put this down momentarily. And that is going to expose your GFI plug. Now all the receptacles here in this unit are on the same circuit. So what that means for you is if they were to be tripped or overloaded, either way, the reset point's gonna be here. So they all are linked together. They will all follow suit. Just like in your bathroom at home, push the reset button that will restore functionality to those receptacles. And then we have your Dometic cooktop here. Of course, we already seen that opening open. Now when you open it, you go ahead and lift these wind guards up to put those into position so they kind of stay locked you go ahead and lift them up and those are going to be the wind guards help if on a nice gusty day it's not going to blow your burners all around things like that and then when you do go to light you have it clearly marked there on the switch we go ahead and use the electric igniter now once you do actually see flame at the burner go ahead and hold this switch for about three seconds longer allow that thermal coupler to heat up and then that's gonna stay on on its own accord. You can go ahead and choose the intensity of your flame. Next up here is going to be your sink. Of course, it's a, a beautiful, large sink. It works very well. They did a great job on that. Uh, do keep in mind it's cold water only, so there's no water heater or anything here on the Luna Rover, but they did a great job with the stylings here in this back uh, kitchen area. And then if we go ahead and open this cabinet down here, uh, this is going to give us a view of kind of the working components back here. Uh, underneath this white box is going to be where your battery is housed. Uh, here at Princess Craft, we use a, uh, generally our standard battery is going to be an interstate lead acid or flooded battery. So what that's going to do is carry a little bit of maintenance. Uh, once every 90 days or so, you're gonna go ahead and open this box up and we are gonna pull the vent panels off of the battery. We're going to inspect the water level uh, making sure that's not being depleted in any way. If for whatever reason it looks a little low, uh, we're gonna top that off with distilled water and make sure it's distilled water only. So also down here, we have a battery disconnect switch. It's gonna be here on this sidewall. What you're gonna go ahead and use that for is if you are storing the unit for periods, uh, for long-term periods, 
we're gonna go ahead and disconnect that battery. What you do when you flip that switch is that isolates that battery completely from the other components of the 12 volt system. And the idea being is that at that point, all your, all your battling is going to be environmental drains. And the idea being is that you can go ahead and flip that switch, leave the unit for a period of time, and when you come back to it, that battery will, will be in relatively the same condition as it was when you left it. Right next to your battery, you're going to, of course, see your water lines and water pump ran along this back wall. Now, uh, there's a multitude of valves there, and uh, we're gonna go over what each valve does. So, this first valve here is going to uh, be your freshwater tank drain. So if we were to open that up and then trace that water line back, we're gonna see it kind of transitions through the floor here and ultimately will drain your water from right behind the bumper there. Uh, what this one would do is that is going to, uh, that will allow that water to, um, like essentially it would be like a low point drain. So this is going to allow the water lines uh, between water source and fixture to be drained again. So once we open that up, we trace that down, it's gonna head right to where we saw that fresh water drain out as well. And then coming up here, uh, we have this line here that's going to come from our water tank or holding tank. And we have that valve open and that's coming there to the water pump here. And then ultimately making its way to the fixture. Now, if we go ahead and take a look here at this valve, that's going to be a valve that will open up uh, the, the vacuum to this hose essentially. And what we're going to use that for is winterization or adding antifreeze to the unit. So the idea being is that we go ahead and we drain all of the water from the freshwater holding tank. And then we can go ahead and close that valve off, the one closest to the freshwater tank. And then what we would do is open this valve up here and uh, take this cap off, put that directly into our bottle of antifreeze. Now, if we turn on the, the water pump and run the fixture, you're gonna see that bottle of anti antifreeze be depleted as this sucks that through the system. Uh, now, once you go ahead and see the pink coming from the fixture or the antifreeze coming from the fixture, it may not always be pink, but it could be purple. But once you see that coming from the fixture, you do know that you are fully winterized and you're good to store the unit uh, for your colder months. I think that that just about covers it here in this under sink compartment. Oh, one, one other thing to mention, uh, if you don't already know, uh, there are no holding tanks for your wastewater on the Rover. Uh, you can see that this would be your sink drain that is going to just come down and transition through the floor. We catch it with a bucket here in the shop, um, but there is a little cap and that's going to be a standard garden hose sizing. So what that means for you is if you don't wanna necessarily catch it in a bucket here, you can go ahead and thread a small garden hose onto that, route that water away from your campsite or into any other receptacle that you wish to use. All right, guys, here we are topside, uh, just in time to go ahead and show you the high point microwave here. Uh, it is just a, a pretty standard uh, turntable style microwave. It will function uh, very much the same as any microwave that you may have used in the past. You will see that you have some preset, fun preset functions here at the top and some mode buttons. Time and temperature below that, stop, start, you know, kind of the usual suspects in those terms. And then one of my absolute favorite things uh, that you have with this unit is going to be your cooler fridge here. Uh, now this works on 110 volt electricity. It also runs on 12 volt as long as you go ahead and flip that switch that we talked about. Uh, this will open from either direction, uh, so whichever way works for you is going to be best. I think it works best for Lindsay if I open it from this way. And then we can see our mode buttons here and are basically our settings. Uh, the reason why, if you're asking why is the, the orientation towards the rear, it's because of the plug and things are back there, so it just makes it easier in a nice cleaner install for it to be uh, facing the rear here. So next up is going to be our set button that's going to take us into some different options and functions. Uh, if I hit that one time, that's going to show us the set temperature. And then if I hit it, hit it again, we can switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then next up is going to be some preset uh, temperatures uh, to go ahead and utilize with this. Uh, not exactly 100% sure what those presets are, so consult the manual if you want more information on that. Now, if you do want to change your set temperature, you have plus or minus here. 
Uh, and as far as I know, you can actually run this down quite a bit. So I think this will go to, um, you know, yeah, you can see it going there down into, you can run it all the way to zero degrees, uh, which would basically operate this as a freezer. So you can go ahead and, and do a hard freeze on all your food. You can run it some way in the middle and have kind of like a fridge freezer combo. Really the possibilities are endless with this. It's an excellent upgrade to this particular unit and uh, I just really enjoy it. Now, one thing to keep in mind, uh, to keep that stationary while going down the road, uh, they did go ahead and give you a buckle here. So let's make sure that we are buckling that in uh, so it's not going to do any damage to the uh, fridge itself or the unit back here. All right, guys, so we have the Rhino Rack Sunsetter awning here. Um, it's a great awning, it's a great feature of the camper, but it can be cumbersome to do by yourself. So Brooke here is going to give me a hand as we go ahead and show you how to set this up. So we've already unzipped the bag there. If we kind of lift that up, you see you have some, two, uh, some Velcro straps there that's keeping everything secure. Uh, if we go ahead and undo that, everything is kind of rolled up here into a nice tight package. So as we go ahead and unroll it, uh, this is where the helper is going to come in. And if you just wanna go ahead and hold that portion for me. So if we look underneath that fabric, you're gonna see that you have another set of poles up top there. Those are gonna be your side support poles. So we go ahead and fold those out and you can see that they do have a little Velcro lashing here to go ahead and secure those. And they are telescopic as well. So if you rotate them slightly, that will allow them to extend. And then you have a little hole here and this is going to uh, go right in that hole and hold that into place. Now, once you've done that, you come back up here and you rotate that clockwise to lock it down. So you're then going to do the very same thing here on this side. And we won't lash that side down. And then if I can take this from you and we're gonna fold these legs down. So if you wanna go ahead and grab that. And then again, these are going to be telescopic legs. Mine went ahead and, and fell out, but you hold that to your desired pitch. And again, rotate clockwise to lock that in. Um, now there's gonna be some other like guide wires and tent stakes and things like that to help this uh, be even more secure while using it. But as you can see, it's a very cool feature and uh, very easy to set up as long as you have a, another set of hands. All right, guys, that just about covers the exterior. We hope you enjoy the ride so far. Let's go hop on the inside and see what Intec has in store for us. Now, of course, probably the first thing you notice is uh, the fireplace here. Probably the next thing you're asking yourself is, where does the smoke go? So all jokes aside, this is a really, really, really cool feature. Uh, it's beautiful in here. Um, now, you have an on-off button. That's going to be the first button you see. And then as you notice that you can change the color of those flames and you can also change the brightness if you're inclined to do so. Also a really cool feature to this is it's actually an electric heater as well. So uh, any unit of this size, you're, you're really never going to get a propane burning furnace. Uh, what this does is acts like an uh, excellent substitute for that. So if we go ahead and take a look there on the on-screen display, you can adjust that temperature right here on the unit. To make things even use easier, you do have a remote uh, to access all of those functions. You can even set a timer to have that heat kick on or, or the whole unit uh, as well. Uh, right beside that, we have your Jensen TV. Uh, this is going to be your TV remote. It's going to function basically like any remote you've ever used. And um, other than that, I mean, it's, it's a TV, so not really too terribly much to say about that. And then down below that, we have your fuse panel breaker box. Now, everything you see here on the right side is going to utilize a automotive blade type fuse. Uh, easily accessible or easily, uh, yes, easily accessible at any 
uh, auto parts store or RV dealer and it's going to be my recommendation to go ahead and pick up a variety pack of fuses keep them with the unit uh, if you don't have a spare you'll probably inevitably need one uh, that's just how the world works and then everything there on the left side is going to utilize a re resettable light switch style breaker same variants you will generally find in your breaker box at home in terms of function for both the 12 volt and the 110 volt appliances those are outlined or listed here on the door and then below that we have a very important piece of safety equipment that is going to be our carbon monoxide and lp leak detector now very important with all of our safety equipment smoke alarm fire extinguisher all of those things we do go ahead and test those every single time we take the unit out we want to know that in the event of an emergency our safety equipment is in good working shape this is wired into the 12 volt system of the camper so there is no battery to change or anything like that super easy to go ahead and test there's a button here you go ahead and push that button it's going to let you know that everything is good and working order by an audible tone and then if i can get out of the way here we see our jensen stereo unit now this is essentially going to be your multimedia center within the camper uh, this is going to give you full function to am fm radio bluetooth cd dvd all those functions will be used on this unit here uh, i don't find that too many of my customers need a, a walkthrough on how to use these units they are pretty basic and uh, they work fine uh, kind of the jensen's the tried and true uh, manufacturer of RV head units and things like that. So they know what they're doing. They did a great job with that. And then we have your window AC here. Obviously it's not in a window, but it is the styling of a window AC. You do have a separate remote for that. Uh, and this operates really, you know, seamlessly. It does have a time and temperature setting here. So you can set a thermostat. It's going to maintain that temperature. You have um, different efficiency ratings and fan speeds and things like that super easy to use uh, again you have a remote to access those functions wirelessly or you can go ahead and use them directly on the display right above the tv here you're going to see some cabinetry uh, of course three cabinet doors now intec has went ahead and utilized the soft closed uh, cabinet doors so um, moving up here uh, we see our fire extinguisher up here i'm going to go ahead and pull that down uh, to show you how we test that out and again you guessed it we test our safety equipment every single time we take the unit out uh, you're going to notice a green tab there on the top we go down we go and press that in and if it springs back you're good to go if not it will need to be replaced next up here we have our window shades now these are two stage window shades uh, first one of course being slightly opaque that's going to let some natural light in and then if we're trying to sleep in or block out that light we have kind of like a white out or a blackout uh, curtain or however you want to think about it but that is going to uh, of course keep that natural light in and then if we go ahead and take a look here we have our air Excel max fan control uh, what this does is gives you full control over the overhead fan. Now that is going to be a 12 volt appliance. So if you are off grid, feel free to go ahead and take advantage of that. Now, when we look here at the display, we have our on off button there. And then if we're looking here at the controls, we have up or down here to set a set fan speed. Uh, I believe that goes in 10% increments and that fan will continue to run at that at that speed. Now, if we go take a look here at the left and right arrows, what that's going to allow us to do is set a thermostatic temperature and that fan will kick on and off to maintain that temperature. And then down below here, we can reverse the directions of that fan. So if we want to go ahead and open up all the doors and windows and run that fan in reverse, that would give us the, uh, a nice cross breeze. Or if we want to, uh, of course, draw air from the inside, we can, or from the outside, we can go ahead and do that as well. And then if we want to just circulate the air that we already have within the unit, we can go ahead and close that lid, still run that fan, and that's going to help circulate that air conditioning throughout the unit. And then down below here, we have one of our light switch clusters. Uh, we have our main overhead lights. We have our porch light, our cabinet accent lights, which is just going to be the blue lights here above my head. And then we have that front accent light, which was that beautiful blue light you saw uh, at the onset of this presentation. Right inside the entry door here, you are going to notice your carbon monoxide smoke alarm combination. Now this particular appliance does run on a nine volt battery. So obviously it's going to be my recommendation that you do keep a spare battery with the unit. 
Uh, if this, for whatever reason, if this were to start to chirp at you in the middle of the night, uh, you know, you want to have the option of being able to change that battery without, uh, you know, momentarily removing it and going out with going on without that protection throughout the night. So keep a spare battery. Uh, also, you guessed it, piece of safety equipment. We test that every single time we take the unit out. All right, guys, here, right inside the other entry door, we have our porch light switch for that side. And then we have a secondary main light switch as well, which is going to control the overhead lights. Uh, now, taking a look here at the front of the camper, of course, you have storage underneath both sides there. And then if we take a look up top here, we have these blue reading lights. Now, uh, they do come on blue. If you go ahead and hold that switch for one second longer, uh, they're going to turn to a bright white, kind of like a reading light. Uh, also up front here, we have a pull down privacy shade. Uh, of course, that doesn't mean as much when you have the rock guard installed on the front, but if for whatever reason you did not, uh, and you certainly would want some privacy, so you have this projector style privacy shade. Uh, when you wanna go ahead and retract it, just give it a slight tug and it is spring loaded. We'll go ahead and retract back up into uh, its space. And then we have speakers here on either side as well. Of course, those are going to be powered by the Jensen unit we talked about uh, on the other side. So on both sides here, you uh, have cup holders up top here, and then we have a couple USB chargers here on the left side, and then on the right side, we have a couple 15 amp outlets. So between the two, you should be able to power any devices that you're trying to do so here in this particular area. And as promised at the start of the presentation, there is a surprise for you. It's underneath this cabinetry here. You have a toilet. Now, that may not be exciting to most, but any unit of this size to be able to have a toilet built in uh, is awesome. So here in the RV industry, oftentimes it's the little things to get excited about. So uh, when we go ahead and look at this, this is what they would call a cassette toilet. Uh, your flush button is going to be here. You can see that's gonna feed water to the bowl. And then when we actually go to flush it, you just go ahead and open it up there. So very easy to use here. Now we're gonna hop back on the outside and show you how to go ahead and dump that cassette toilet. We have saw how to work the uh, toilet there on the inside. Now, if we go ahead and open this up, that's going to go ahead and expose uh, the actual kind of business end, if you wanna think about it that way. So you have a, a kind of a locking tab here that keeps that in place when you're going down the road. So you go ahead and you lift up on that. Now keep in mind that as I pull this out, this is designed that that kind of blade X valve and, and everything that you would have access to on the inside, it's kind of self-contained. So it has a sliding door that closes all of that. So you're not kind of looking at it uh, when trying to dump it. So you go ahead and pull this out. It's gonna come straight out for you. And there is actually a pull handle on this. I think it flips up from the bottom. Yeah, something like that and some wheels. Uh, the idea being is that, um, you know, you don't always have access to like a dump location or if you're off grid, things like that. Now, the size of this unit kind of sets you up to be able to go anywhere and the cassette toilet kind of follows along with that. So what that means is you can, you know, use the toilet in here instead of walking to the, uh, the lavatories at the RV park or the campground that you're staying at. And you can just go ahead and re ro roll this to the restroom and you can dump this right in the toilet and flush it down the drain. So that's generally the biggest selling point of these cassette style toilets. Uh, now when it actually does come to dump your waste from the receptacle, you go ahead and you flip out this elbow here. You're of course going to unscrew it and you're going to see a little uh, vacuum inlet here. What that's going to do is provide air to the unit when you go and dump it. So it's not like glug glugging when you're trying to go ahead and get rid of that waste. Uh, and then once we go ahead and want to return the unit back to service, we just go ahead and screw that on. And we're gonna go ahead and very easily, it's as easy, I should say, as just pushing it in. That's going to go ahead and return it to service and it's ready to use. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed this awesome walkthrough. If you think we're doing an awesome job, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, have a great day. I'm funny. Beep boop, bop, beep boop. I want to be a pretty girl. Everything is awesome. Too excited, too much, too much.